seriously, how many times do I have to paint orcs? They are numerous, they are brutal, they are nasty, and there will always be more of them, no matter how many get killed or painted. These are the quintessential fantasy baddies. This is my quest, a hero's quest, if I may, to find the ultimate recipe for painting orcs. The easiest, more efficient way to get them on the table. And I hope that the knowledge gathered here will help you on your fight to demolish your pile of shame and to hear the lamentation of your players. Let's start. These are Hero Quest Orcs, the new Hero Quest Orcs. I am used to Games Workshop evil green dudes, which are basically mushrooms with big teeth and nasty swords. These dudes, on the other hand, are more Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition kind of orcs. They have female orcs with them, mean looking armor, and the goofiness is all but gone. They will do just fine. My objective here, our objective, is to find a way to paint these guys with a minimal amount of effort, if any at all. In fact, I want the key areas of the mini, the skin and the armor to be dealt with as fast and as efficiently as possible. The small details will be the ones that will get some attention to make the overall quality improve. We want to have this done easily. Less steps, more productivity. More productivity, more minis painted, more minis painted, more games played the way they are supposed to be played. Capiche? Let's start with a very important consideration when it comes to painting a la wash the wash. Priming. For painting with washes and inks, you do need to prime in a light color. In my research, I am going to try three-ish different ways of priming. White, light gray, and cenital priming with both white and gray over a black coat of a spray paint. The second most important thing to consider, up to the point of having a bigger impact than what you use to prime your minis with, is what color you use as the first coat. Let's begin with yellowish colors. Priming white, I painted these minis with yellow colors. There is no need for control, just paint the skin with the color of choice. Once that dries, I paint with a green color on top. Now, why green? Well, because orcs are green. Yeah, you can argue about colors, gray, mottled, pinkish, whatever. But my orcs are green. They have always been, they are now, and will probably continue being in the foreseeable future. We are going to combine colors by putting them on top of each other. First, yellow, then a green hue. Mortarian green will work fine here, but there are many other colors that you can use, as I will show you later. They all do their own thing and affect the end result quite significantly. I wanted consistency on this part of the process, as I wanted to research more about the priming and the undercoat, so I will use Mortarian green in the next two batches too. The orcs with yellow undercoat look like this, which is the kind of color I want them when I paint Warhammer orcs, very similar to the ones from the Middlehammer era. We just have begun, let's try something radically different now. Purple undercoat. Wait, what? Purple? Yes, my dear orc files, we are going to use purple. Q color chart here. As you can see, purple and green are opposites in the wheel. This means that purple makes sick looking shading for green. If I use it for the undercoat, will it work? Well, technically it should. In reality, there are some shortcomings with this. The green paint I am using doesn't cover the strongest purples well, so we get a very mottled effect. I am not really into it because it reads awfully. Purple should read as deep shadows and it is still very evident in the raised areas. I will need to highlight and then glaze. For this I'm going to use military green this time, which might avoid the issue as it is much stronger than mortarian green. Now contrast paints usually have way better coverage than the air range. And if you're going to use a purple undercoat, then consider using a green color on top that does a better job at covering. Once beaten, twice shy. So these are the purple undercoat orcs. How do you like them? Overall, they are a tad darker, still strongly orcish. The extra work with the highlights and glazing was a pain in the arse, but with a different green, they work just fine. 
Okay, let's get into zenithal priming territory. For these ones, I decided to use flesh colors as an undertone. Why flesh? Because of two reasons. I think you can get an interesting color after you paint with flesh or earthy tones. More natural, of course, than the yellow ones. And secondly, why the hell not? Experimenting is a nice way of doing things. Red is the absolute opposite of green and it could lead to interesting results. The shading provided by the Senegal Priming make the minis look way less cartoonish and more grim dark. This works great with the look of these minis. Of the three batches, this looks the most brutal and menacing, but I will let you decide which one you like best. Now on to the last batch. These were primed with a light grey color and I decided to paint them with colors that were not Games Workshop almost exclusively. For this I used different combinations and mixtures. The green itself is a mix between Daler Rowney Olive and Vallejo Green Wash. The best part is that Vallejo and Daler Rowney are very consistent ranges that do not change every 3 or 4 years. Looking at you, Games Workshop. So you know that, if you like a way of doing something, they are gonna be there for you for years to come. Now that we got the orc skin out of the way and you have seen all the different ways of painting that, let's focus on the armor, the weapons and all the other stuff that will make the minis go from this to this. Armor and weapons. Paint them with a black wash. I have used these two, Black Templar or Daily Runny Black Ink. Once those dry, highlight the edges with a silver color. Kill the shine in the inner areas with some Agrax Earthshade or watered down brown ink. It will look like rust and grime. Finish it all off with some Nihilac Oxide in the crevices of the armor. For the areas made of brass, paint them with silver. Paint them with either Nasdrek Yellow or a mix of 50-50 yellow ink and brown ink, followed by a wash with watered down orange ink. Add Nihilac Oxide for some nice patina. Remember to slightly water it down for a better effect. Clothes. I painted them blue. I used Ultramarines Blue and Drakenhof Nightshade. Why blue? Why not? Leather. Either Gore Grant of Fur, either Brown Ink from Daily Brownie. Nails and teeth, they are definitely worth some attention. Paint them with black at the same time that you paint the armor, or just some brown ink. Then highlight with pure bone color, Ushapti bone or Vallejo bone white, for example. For the eyes, paint them with black, then red, and then put a yellow dot inside. Done. For the hair, any color you want goes there. The handles of the weapons, well, I painted them with orange and then red, and I call it a day. For the bases, I go with my usual dungeon style, so they fit with the rest of my collection for HeroQuest. And a final piece of advice, get some bone color and put a few highlights on the eyebrows, the nose, the cheekbones and the chin of your minis. This will give them plus 10 to charisma. And God knows that they need all the charisma they can get. Now, the real deal here, what is my favorite color combo? I think for my middle hammer orcs, I would stick to the white or gray primer, followed by plate bearer and mortarian green combo. But I honestly also like the sun yellow plus olive green and vallejo green wash mix. Those two are my faves. But I really like seeing the whole set of orcs as a motley crew of different color, hues and tones. It looks quite nice when seen all together. Well, you know what you have to do if you enjoyed the video. And now, watch one of these and remember, my name is Miguel, this is Rocks of Us, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Un beso. Adios.